race that goes through the center of Monaco starts on the busy Albert I Boulevard. German race car driver Ellen Law has been living here for more than 20 years and uses the boulevard daily. Now and then, I think, here I am sitting in the quiet neighborhood of La Condamine with a coffee. And a few years ago, actually a bit longer than that, 50 meters from here, I was holding the trophy in my hands. The peaceful quarter of La Condamine is located right alongside Albert I Boulevard. Next to the palace cliffs known as The Rock, La Condamine is the oldest part of Monaco. It's now been made into a pedestrian zone. The old part, La Condamine, is located right next to the starting line. It's dominated by old buildings and apartments that don't have elevators. La Condamine is the opposite of hustle and bustle. For me, it's the most pleasant area here. There are plenty of nice shops far away from the malls. You can shop and stroll too. We move on to the small church that marks the spot where the start and finish straightaways end. Saint Devot is where the course begins winding its way up to the casino, Monaco's most famous landmark. The Place du Casino glitters with the glamour associated with the principality. International jet-setting guests party year-round at the Hotel de Paris. Monaco native Henri Doria has been watching the goings-on here for 70 years. It might not be a symbol of Monaco, but it's a pretty typical sight here. The Place du Casino is where Ferraris meet and greet. This is where luxury gathers. It's been that way for a decade. The casino was the start of Monaco's wealth. From the Place du Casino, the race course heads back downhill towards the Fermont, a luxury hotel built in the middle of a cliff above the sea. The best view of the tightest curve in the Grand Prix can be had from the roof terrace pool. It's something that former Silver Arrow driver Sterling Moss enjoys. He and his wife Susie are regulars here. Of course, they stay in the suite named after him. Images of his Monaco victories decorate the walls. The suite has a balcony overlooking the water. It's in the right place. It's got a fantastic view when they go past. And you know, I think it's magic. I mean, even, even without bothering about the Grand Prix, it's still a lovely, you know, beautiful uh, dining room and everything. Oh, I love it. Cool. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about you looking down from the bedroom. Well, I, I think it looks there. <laughs> I'm picking up hints. <laughs> I followed Fangio in this thing and watching him. <laughs> After the hairpin turns around the Fermont Hotel, there's a straight stretch through the tunnel. But of course, that doesn't mean that you can drive fast here. It's too bad, but you have to obey the traffic laws. Legendary Paris Dakar rally winner Jutta Kleinschmidt is always happy to get back into the light at the end of the tunnel. That's when there's a view of Monaco's yacht harbor, Port Hercule. The ships that tie up here seem to get bigger with each passing year. There are plenty of restaurants down at Portside, particularly in the west, opposite the Rascasse Curve, which brings the Grand Prix drivers back to the main straightaway. You miss a lot driving through here at speed, just like Michael Schumacher did with his best time of 1 minute and 14 seconds. During the day, you can have a coffee and see more boats than you're likely to see in many other places. And come evening, it turns into a nice promenade. In the bars and restaurants that line the course, the odds are pretty good at any time of the year that you'll meet a star race car driver, because, not surprisingly, many of them live in Monaco.